Okay, well, good morning, guys. I um, thought I'd bring you along here. I've uh, done this little project, and the project itself is nothing spectacular other than it's got some um, interesting concepts to it. Now, I've been working on my old 54 Chevy pickup, and I picked up a couple of motors. We're going to build a motor for it and uh, do quite a bit of stuff to it, actually. But anyway, I did not have an engine leveler. And I could have gone out and bought a cheap ass Harbor Freight one for 50 bucks, or I could have bought a maybe a little bit better quality one for any place from 100 to 3,000 dollars type of thing. Um, so I decided to build my own. And what I did was I set requirements for myself or goals for myself that I wanted this all to be built out of junk stuff that I had here in the shop now even if it wasn't junk I wanted it to be out of materials or fasteners that type of thing that I had in stock in the shop I didn't want to have to go to the store and purchase anything for this and and I actually met those goals there's a couple of things that I took from other things I had here in the shop so you know that I'm gonna have to replace but other than that that was you know couple of nuts and bolts and that type of thing so I didn't shoot any video of this but I thought I would I took a bunch of stills along the way and I thought I'd just walk you through what I what I did because I thought there was a couple of things that were kind of interesting uh, this first picture is the finish leveler I've got a Chevy 235 motor hanging from it with the, the heads already off but it's a 235 this is what I actually used to test it out with and make sure it was going to do what I wanted because I primarily wanted it for this engine at this point in time so this picture shows that completed uh, that completed leveler, and I'm very very happy with it. So as I go on to the next picture, this is just the beginning of the materials. Now um, I've actually got things out of order because this uh, this lower bracket along here has been um, has already been cleaned up a little bit. There's a lead screw and a nut hanging here. Now these are actually um, junk this is stuff that when I converted my G007 lathe over to CNC this will be the uh, y-axis lead screw and nut so uh, when I took them off you know they went in a box I knew I'd or I hoped I'd use them for for something someday and this is what I came up with uh, nuts probably somewhat worn for this application I don't care it's still got the adjuster to tension it on it now I did pull this bushing this uh, oil light bushing was in my in my bushing drawer it was one of the scrap left over something it's a brand new bushing but it's something that I had there in stock uh, we've got this piece of tubing up above it with the two hooks the hooks I had laying around and the piece of tubing was junk tubing that uh, that was in the scrap pile uh, the bottom one's a 21 inch long piece of I think it's two by three or two by four. I think it must be two by three, inch and a half by three. I'll have to go back and measure. I'll put it in the description here. Um, anyway, it was a 21 inch piece. It had uh, been part of a, a rack that uh, that my welder was mounted on probably when I got it. At some point in time, it had expanded metal uh, welded both to the top and the bottom of it. So it took a little bit of cleaning up um, there again ground it off and this is another picture of the same thing as we go along this shows the these are some inch and a half by two um, no it's inch by inch and a half is what the width on this is and what these are and these are about two inches long I went back and trimmed these back later and this is a setup for the for that lead screw I had some bronze bushing material or bronze bearing material and that's what I turned this bushing on the end of it out of and here it is set up and started the weld in, in place I've got my brackets welded on here uh, made sure I had good alignment for the lead screw so it was free all the way through I did go back and open up clearances on this at one at some point in time there's the other piece of tubing cut in half and uh, the brackets for the hooks hung on it so this this came along really nice. I was really happy with the with the outcome of this. This were pretty well assembled, other than our brackets to hold it up. Um, my nuts on the end, I turned spacers the proper diameter, and these are a larger nut um, TIG welded onto the end of them. So I've got tension on both ends of these, and uh, and I did make another modification of these after I finished 
finish turning them down to to uh, get everything else in position this is the beginning of the side brackets and took the plasma cutter made me a little chipboard template and we cut out the two side plates drilled them to match we've turned our two spacers here and this was kind of a cut and fit type of thing this is another piece of that inch thick material drilled and tapped to step the swivel eye now this swivel eye is just one that I had kicking around um, it's one I acquired for nothing or next to nothing and it was in my scrap pile for projects like this this is the way it lays out in between now I did rob two grade 8 bolts and these are half inch bolts I believe rob these two half inch bolts here out of my hold downs for on the G0755 so I will have to replace them I figured it was worth hanging a grade 8 bolt here and this is that swivel eye that I adapted to it so everything's set up there in position there we are laid out the way it's supposed to be set up now in our brackets here I drilled three holes so I've got three adjustments to slide this in and out probably never use it beyond that and the second hole is where it lays out very nice for the for the length on the 235 for these stove bolt six engines and there we've got our I think we're a little bit wide we haven't trimmed our spacers down to match here yet we took a plate and this is a piece of 3 8 plate I had to machine down the back sides of them a little bit to get the hooks to clear on there and they're hung. Now I modeled this after an OTC engine leveler and um, I really like their design. They're ones that I was looking at they, they want a whole lot of money for. They're rated for 6,000 pounds and I wouldn't hang 6,000 pounds on this but um, this will do everything I want it to do I think throughout its life. Um, the OTC they want I think like $2,000 for or something like that there's a better better shot of our little nuts on the end like I say I just take welded them together then once I drilled them out to fit the end now the end of the shaft one end was already turned I turned the other end to match and uh, fit my bushings accordingly and uh, and of course we trim back these bolts when we're done welded them up on welded up the bracketry there on the top portion this is the lead screw nut. Now I slotted it through here this way. That way I can put a bolt through that bracket so it will hold it stationary still and still allow a little bit of movement. Um, slotted it up and down so if there is any flex up and down or positioning alignment problems vertically, why it's going to take care of itself with having a slot in there. And it worked out very, very well. There's the assembly pretty much put together. We've welded up the top all the way around. And uh, this is the bolt that goes through, and all it is is a quarter inch bolt that goes through that slot to hold the nut in alignment. And there's another picture of it as we go along. The uh, top of this was drilled 5 8 11, I believe it is, for the, for the swivel eye that goes on top. And there's a better picture of our swivel eye. Like I say, this was surplus. This is one I had kicking around that I acquired and didn't really have a home for it. The reason I did the swivel, and you don't see this, or I didn't see it on very many, if any, of these levelers, is by the time you hang an engine off of a cherry picker, or an engine hoist, whatever you want to call it, and then try and either set it in place, or for me, put it on either my run stand, or hang it on the engine stand, why it, the feet aren't wide enough to wide enough or narrow enough however you want to look at it, the front legs um, to get it either in between or on the outsides of, of those stands so with a with a swivel on it I can come in at an angle I can rotate it around the little bit that I need to and then level out the motor and it's going to allow me to get it set in position the way I want now there it's initially initially trying it out and it works exceptionally well I was a little bit concerned it wouldn't be it wouldn't uh, adjust smoothly because the tolerances are fairly tight side to side with the the plate onto that main rail 
and uh, I was really surprised you get the weight of an engine on it without the engine weight on there why it wants to kind of cock itself sideways but when you get the the full weight of an engine on there why it sets it down across the bottom and it it rotates very smoothly and slides along very nicely I was very pleased with the way it uh, the way it adjusted and the way it hung a motor there's the pieces going into the powder coat oven they've already been powder coated and hung in and they're just sitting there watching the world go by there they are out of the powder coat oven getting ready to go back together and here we've just started assembling it again lead screws all back in I've gone back through and uh, on the ends of these nuts I drilled them through and pinned them to hold them in position so they don't have any adjustment I trimmed the top of the mounting brackets off on here to get them a little bit lower profile and I did go back and drill and tap these for a set screw just to just to bear on those on those uh, oil light bushings and the, and the brass bushing on the other end just so they didn't have any opportunity to move one way or the other just a little insurance I think it would have been fine and never never moved out of position but um, now we've made sure and there it is all pretty much assembled laid out everything uh, everything's powder coated and for all intents and purposes it's done I, I you know I'd gone back and trimmed the back sides of the of the bolts with the longer bolts sticking on through and uh, got them all fitted in position so there it is motor hanging off the off the bottom of it um, it it levels very nicely you know you'll uh, I may or may not show any more of this. I, you know, today I'm going out and going to finish the engine mount to to mount that motor onto my engine stand. The other motor that I bought was kind of a junk motor I discovered after I got the head off of it, um, and I have had it mounted on the engine stand, but it didn't. I was using my universal mounting bracket for it. It just didn't want to hang hang right. So I'm uh, I'm working on the new mounting brackets for this and uh, you know maybe I'll show a little bit of the machining on that I don't know how interesting that stuff is to you guys I don't normally you know working on this kind of stuff I normally don't put anything out the reason I didn't video this one is it's just a time crush to get projects done I've got so many projects that if I took the time to try and video everything I did why you guys would be bored you wouldn't be interested in it and I'd never get anything done and I'm slow getting stuff done as it is so anyway that's what we're at hopefully you find that a little bit interesting uh, comments, suggestions, leave them in the comment section for me below, guys. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.